Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you my search for the grave of the Indian king, Raja Raja. I was told that his tombstone lies in the small village of Urayalur. This is where he is rumored to have been buried or cremated. When I visited this place, I was surprised to see a lingam, which is only two feet tall. And this elderly gentleman told me that the rest of the structure is buried underneath about 14 feet deep. It is a rather simple lingam with a diameter of only one and a half feet. He says that this is the tombstone of the great king Raja Raja. I asked him if he knew how the king died and he told me that he died naturally of old age and he was cremated right here. Why would a great king have such a small, almost anonymous grave? As you can see, there are no inscriptions, no carvings on this lingam or anywhere near the site. Remember, Raja Raja built the greatest temple in India, which is now declared a World Heritage Site. And his accomplishments and other information are inscribed all over the walls in many temples. So I asked this gentleman if there is any evidence to prove that this is in fact Raja Raja's grave. He told me that there used to be a pillar here and it was donated to a temple called Palkulatamman Temple a few miles away. He said that this pillar has inscriptions which proves that Raja Raja died here. So I decided to travel to this temple and take a look at this pillar myself. As soon as I reached the temple, I immediately spotted the pillar. The pillar does contain the word Raja Raja, so it is obviously related to the king, but I was not able to completely understand what the inscription said, so I took a lot of pictures and copied the entire writings on a notepad. I contacted an epigraphist who was able to tell me exactly what was written in this pillar. I have posted the entire inscription and its translation on my website, phenomenalplace.com, and you can take a look at it if you're interested. I double checked this information with another expert as well. What the inscription says is that the royal palace of Raja Raja Chola was renovated by four people. The inscription includes those four names and that is all the information we see on the pillar. The inscription has no reference to the death or grave of the king at all. This shows that the site of the lingam is probably not Raja Raja's grave and there is no actual evidence to claim so. This raises the question of what happened to Raja Raja, how did he die, where did his funeral take place. Think a moment, there are hundreds of inscriptions about Raja Raja's accomplishments, how he conquered various territories, how he built the great temple and even when he was born, but there is no information whatsoever about when or how he died and where he was buried or cremated. So I decided to go back to Tanjavur to find out more about his death. I contacted several archaeologists and they told me that the only reason why a king's death would not be recorded is if the king died an unnatural death. So if a king committed suicide or was murdered, then the ancient Tamils would not record that. Then I spoke to a lot of locals in Tanjavur to see if anyone knew how he died. The locals tell a very different but consistent story. It turns out that Raja Raja was actually murdered by a woman from Sri Lanka. Let's hear what this gentleman says. இப்ப ராஜராஜனோட சக்சஸர் வந்து அவர் பையன் தான் இல்லைங்களா அந்த இது அவங்களே தான் தள்ளி இருக்கணும் அப்போ அவங்களே தான் தள்ளி இருக்கணும் இல்லையா கங்கை இல்லை சிலோன்லேருந்து வந்திருக்காங்க ஓஹோ சிலோன் பீப்புள் இவனை கங்கை இவன் கரிகால சோழன் இது கட்டினால கல்லணை 
In the year 993 AD, Rajaraja conquered half of Sri Lanka and the defeated King Mahinda V fled to the south to avoid being captured. Unable to defeat Rajaraja in the battlefield, King Mahinda sent a Buddhist woman from Sri Lanka who slowly got into the inner circle of Rajaraja. When Rajaraja was standing on the 8th floor inspecting the progress of the big temple, she simply pushed him down. This fall killed him instantly. People claim this is why the temple was not properly finished and his son created a whole new capital in a different city because he thought that this was a cursed place. This story also explains why his son Rajendra Chola went after Sri Lanka with a vengeance conquering the entire island. He then found King Mahinda V who was hiding, brought him back and kept him as a lifelong prisoner. Mahinda V died in prison around 1029 AD. Although this story explains why there is no record of Rajaraja's death or his tomb, again, I have to point out that I don't have any actual evidence to prove this. So my quest for Rajaraja's grave and the nature of his death remains incomplete. But I'm going to keep searching. I hope you like this video. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.